I'll ask you this question. One of the things I keep emphasizing is the importance of targeting people who profit off the black community. There's a lot of companies and corporations where black folks are patronizing their product, their brand at every single turn. If you really want to make a difference, it's not just about going on Capitol Hill, which is number one on the list, but number two should be targeting those businesses and asking them, what have you done for black people? Because here is what we have done for you. What do you say to that? I say you're absolutely correct. I think that, you know, like <laughs> you, you take this platform, um, you, like you see what, you know, what I've done with Cube, with the big three, what we're doing, that's going to continue moving forward. Yep. Um, we dealt with COVID issues. When you look at Rock the Bells, it's like these, these big corporations, you got to partner with Rock the Bells. Partner with Rock the Bells. We're speaking to Gen X. We're speaking to that classic hip hop customer. We're, we're speaking to their children who are Gen Z. Yo, partner with us. Don't just talk about it, be about it. And, the, you know, this is the type of things that must happen. So you are absolutely right. We cannot fool ourselves into thinking that it got it, it should be all social and no dollars. That is a that's a fallacy and it's a false it's a false way to think about it. It's the wrong way to think about things. We have to have economic empowerment in the community, and we have to just but we just have to have a spirit of generosity and a spirit that says, "Hey, I want to see the whole community get paid, not just have a, a chosen few uh, turn the rest of the community upside down and shake the chains out their pockets." And that's what I'm about. You know, for me, that's what it's about. It's about yeah. getting out there building something, and then sharing it and empowering the rest of my brothers and sisters. Man, LL, you, you, you're from a, a generation before me, but I grew up listening to your music, admiring what you were doing. Just, like, in our communities, we have so many conversations. What kind of advice you giving to the youngsters now? What, what are you telling them in this time where you talk about, you and Stephen A talk about their economic empowerment, you talk about owning businesses and putting yourself in positions to be able to make decisions to uplift um, people that look like you, but not only that, good people that want to do good things for good people. Uh, what, what's, what's the conversations you have with youngsters, give give advice to some of these youngsters out here looking for a way to do something different and have the type of success in their own minds, what they deem success, to be able to help people in their community and push the culture forward as you speak of. I, I would say, I would say to those to those youngsters that one, educate yourself. Two, it, it, it can't just be creativity. You got to be able to execute. Execution is key, just like on a basketball court or on the football field or, or, or any other sport. Execution is key. You got to know the playbook and then you got to be able to execute. And you, you got to be fearless. And um, I would tell them to not limit their thinking. Dreams don't have deadlines. Don't limit your thinking. Don't limit um, uh, what you allow yourself to dream about. Really go for it. But just be educated and consistently learn. Be better today than you were yesterday. Be better tomorrow than you were today. Be in the moment and really apply yourself, you know? And uh, also know that, you know, like me, as, a, as an OG and as, you know, a member of Generation X, I'm here to lay a bridge for you. So Rock the Bells, you can go to Rock the Bells and learn. You can do whatever it is. You can watch the big three and have fun. We're not looking to exclude our younger brothers like yourself and, the, and even the generations before you, I mean, after you. We're looking to include all of us. We have to lay the groundwork and the foundation and the pathway for those who come after us, and we have to pave the way for those who are side by side with us because this is the only way that we're going to be able to be successful. So, you know, when you see a brother like Stephen A., you know, what he's done, how he's, you know, um, matriculated up the barometer of success, did his thing, really took his life to another level. I mean, this is the journey that you have to really look at and emulate, see how articulate he is, articulate he is. Look at how, you know, different parts, different members of our community have really dug in deep to take their lives to the next level. I would encourage you to do the same thing. You can do it. You can do it. You're sitting at home right now. You're watching, well, you're watching, you know, first, you can do it. You know what I mean? Well, first of all, let me let me let me be clear where Mark is sitting right on the air, you know, right here on the airwaves with us. I owe credit to people like LL because LL was coming up on Farmers Boulevard in Queens, New York. Mark is five minutes away from me in Hollis, Queens. We didn't know each other until we got older. But I was watching him do his thing because I grew up with Run DMC, but I didn't know yeah. LL, but he was only five minutes away. And the thing that I loved about it, you know, right back, even back then you talk about hip hop and then you had hardcore hip hop, but you had guys like LL singing, I need 
Hate Love or Hate Love with Boys to Men and stuff like that. Then you get in to the acting business and what have you, doing what you do so you've diversified your portfolio. And as a result, people who were critics no. of the hip-hop industry couldn't look at LL and say, oh, man, it's just hardcore. He's a hip-hop guy. We don't like him. They had to take into account his intellect and how he was making that bridge for other people. So with that in mind, LL, I'll throw this question to you. Considering the times that we're in, we're talking about athletes and their responsibility. We talk about media members like myself, our responsibility. We're talking about renaissance men like yourself who are obviously leaders in our community. Those things are important. What role must the hip-hop industry play and our ascension to these new times because you know the critics from the other side are going to come at them and try to castigate and stigmatize them in order to dilute their message. What do you say uh, to the hip-hop industry? Because you're obviously I, I, familiar with that. I, I would say that the hip-hop industry, um, there are going to have to be some artists that step out um, creatively and musically and talk about some things that really speak to what's going on today. It's nothing wrong with party music. I'm not here to tell people not to party. I'm, I'm definitely not here to try to tell people not to have fun in their music. But when artists like Lil Baby come out with his joint, um, addressing what's going on in the community, when Public Enemy has a has a new song like State of the Union addressing what's going on in the community, I mean, we need that part as well. And we have to set the example, right? Like, look, at the end of the day, um, it is it is truly about putting your best foot forward. You know what I'm saying? Like, when, when I when I designed this company, when we created um, Rock the Bells, it was about putting our best foot forward. What steps can I take to make sure that I'm doing something for, for my community and not just for myself? What steps can I make, can I take to make sure that I'm actually doing something that's going to make the future better for all of us? Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.